OpenArt now has the Flux1 dev image generation model. We're going to check it out, but why do we even care? Well, Flux1 hit the scene a few months ago when Black Forest Labs dropped three versions of this model. They have the Pro fancy version, the Schnell version, which is really fast, and then the middle child, Dev. All three of these model siblings do well with long, natural language type prompts, but they also do well with shorter prompts. And the Flux models can also incorporate text into the image. Now the Pro model does the best at this, but the middle child, the Dev model, isn't too far behind. Let's get in here and generate some images with Flux1 Dev and see what we can get. By the way, OpenArt sponsored this video. What can I say? They love me. And I'm kind of fond of them too. Don't be concerned. Neither OpenArt nor my wife have any control over what I say. Once we're logged into OpenArt, we just want to click on this big create image button. We're going to come over here on the left under model. It defaults to OpenArt SDXL, which is a great model in its own right. But today we're talking about Flux Dev. So we're just going to click on the model. Then we'll have all these to choose from. Click Flux Dev. And now we're ready for a prompt. I already have a prompt written and I'm just going to paste it here into the prompt box. We're going for a powerful female warrior. We can use image guidance with Flux 1 Dev on OpenArt. We could just upload an image right here and let that guide the creation of the image we want to generate. You can set the creativity level to determine how much influence the provided image would have over what it is you're trying to create. We're going to leave that alone for now. Underneath the advanced settings, we can set the number of steps. The default is 10 steps. I have that increased up to 28 steps, which is where I seem to be having the most success with it. You can go all the way up to 50 and you can go all the way down to 10. Each step is is like one more level of refinement from the original seed image. Generally raising the number of steps will increase the quality, but only to a certain point. If you go too high on the steps, sometimes it can come out over refined and you end up with plasticky looking things. And the more steps the AI robots have to go through, the longer it takes to generate. So you want to balance those factors when you're figuring out how many steps you want to go. For the output size, the default is 1024 square. We can drop that default down. Maybe we want to go 16 by 9. I'll go ahead and click create and I'm not going to edit out the processing time for this because I wanted you to see just how quick it goes. And before I can finish explaining that, it's already finished generating. So let's make these images a little bit bigger so we can check them out. I think we've got a powerful female warrior. She's supposed to be in a dark mist filled forest. I think it did pretty well with that. Intricately crafted armor with glowing runes. Her grip tightens on the hilt of a sword that radiates ethereal light. The atmosphere is heavy with magic and danger. I think we got most of that. I don't see any problems really in the face or in the hands. We certainly have some radiation on the sword. I'm not sure that we got glowing runes. And as far as the dark forest, I suppose that's subject to interpretation. This certainly isn't a sunny forest because you've got the tree canopy blocking out most of the sun. If we wanted dark as in nighttime dark, we probably should have specified that in the prompt because that's not what we got. Here's the next image and this warrior looks like she means business. Definitely something radiating from the sword. The hands look pretty good, except for it looks like the thumb is on the wrong side of her right hand. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. I think that could be fixed up pretty easily with either the upscaler or OpenArt has a specific editing tool for fixing hands and faces. So I think you could clean it up just fine there. In this case, I think her face came out well. No work to do there. We've got the hair kind of blowing around here. Overall, I think this is a good image. Now, for comparison's sake, let's go ahead and leave this prompt exactly how it is and switch our model over to the Flux Schnell model. And the setting we're going to look at here is the steps. And just like with the dev model, you're looking for the sweet spot where you get a good looking image that isn't over processed and doesn't take too long to generate. Four is the default. And with Flux Schnell, I find that four steps usually is the sweet spot. We'll go ahead and create. And here's what Schnell gave us. Now we have a sword in her right hand that seems to have two handles. So I guess that's not a sword. She's holding it with both hands, actually. And then another sword. So that's a little wonky and would make this image kind of a no-go unless you were to do some in-painting or a creative upscale to get it where you wanted it to be. The second image, we have a sword in each hand. The sword she's holding in her left hand, she's holding in a rather weird place and her hand's kind of a, a mess there. And I don't know that we asked for these pointy ears or if that just happens to be a feature. We really got some great illumination on the blades of the sword and back to this first one definitely darker than our images came out in dev. 
close that out, we might be able to improve these images created by Chanel if we increase the steps or if we adjusted the prompt. But I just want to show you a quick comparison of Dev and Chanel. Next, I want to try something abstract. We'll go ahead and do this one with Chanel, leave everything the same. Both of these images have swirling colors and they're very vivid. Not a lot of depth to them. They seem to have almost like a watercolor vibe, which I guess is okay for swirling colors. But let's go ahead and switch from Schnell back over to Dev. I'll go ahead and leave the steps at 10, which is the default. We'll click Create. Now across this top row, you can compare them side by side. I notice right away that the two out of Dev, I'm getting a lot more depth out of those. Much greater variance in lighting, interesting things going on, the way these waves sort of trail off, the other variation, a little bit darker, definitely vivid. These two are Schnell, these two are Dev, both with the default number of steps and with the same prompt. Let's go ahead and take the step level up here in Dev from 10 back to the spot I kind of like, which is 28. We'll click Create. And after a few seconds, our first and second images both load. And I think you can see a pretty big difference in what's happening here. Let's take a look at this first one. Now I have a lot of difference in lighting, both vertically and horizontally. It really feels like there's some depth there. And then the second one adds these little balls into the mix, which are really cool. And there's just a whole lot more going on in this image. Now you might've noticed that the prompt I used to generate this image was the keyword style prompt, where we just separate words and very short phrases by commas, basically listing all the things we want in the image. Now, fortunately, all the Flux models, including Flux Dev, can handle that kind of prompt. But the Flux models, including Dev, can also handle natural language prompts that are written in a more descriptive way, more often in full sentences and providing a lot more detail. So I'm going to drop in a prompt that is formatted that way and click Create. There's a lot more nuance to be incorporated here. You can see from our generated images, this really does take the coral reef inspiration and the underwater. I think it's fantastic and I'd be excited to see what this image would do if you put it in an image to video generator. The next one is cool in its own right. It ends up with these little critters in here. I don't know what they are, fishes with wings or something, but the colorful structures certainly look fluid, like something that would move in water. So here's the difference in this top row. The two images on the left are the ones where we used a really long detailed prompt, and the two images on the right are the ones where we used a pretty short keyword type prompt. As long as we're trying out long prompts, let's go ahead and drop this one in, which is really long and detailed. And this is going to be a magic floating island castle. There's a whole lot more detail in there than you want me to read to you. So I'll just let you look at the prompt. This castle is supposed to be in the clouds and there are multiple times in the prompt where we mention softness and painterly and soft lighting and whatnot. So if it's looking a little fuzzy, that's why, because that's what we prompted for. I think our first general generation here did a great job. We have waterfalls coming off of this island. I love that it just adds these other little islands around it with fountains. I mean, I'm not sure how they're supposed to get from the castle to the fountains, but if you're living in a castle on an island in the clouds, maybe you just float to it. I might also question why at the bottom of the castle steps we're in this water that seems to be making up the waterfall, and it also is rolling out of this side entrance to the castle. Maybe the castle's flooding or something. The next image, really cool too. We've got these nifty little brightly colored butterflies for floating around in the clouds up there. A great looking castle. Although again, it does kind of seem like the waterfalls are coming out of the castle. We have maybe a guest house and a mother-in-law suite connected here, which I guess is fine as long as you have a way to um, disconnect this connection. If we tried to switch this up and went with a much shorter prompt looking for the same kind of image, you can see that one is maybe a fifth of what the other prompt was. Was. Flux Dev gives us these two images. We're definitely a castle on an island floating in the clouds. And then the second image, also a castle on an island way up in the clouds. I think I'd be happy living here, especially since this one does not have the mother-in-law island attached to it. Now the Flux models all do pretty well with realism. So here's just a candid snapshot of a lady sitting by a sunny window. I don't think this one's too plasticky, which is a problem you can encounter with some of these Flux generations 
limitations. It's more pronounced in the Schnell model than it is in Dev or Pro, but you do have to kind of watch out for it and prompt accordingly or adjust the steps accordingly. Something entirely different, a microscopic image of Salmonella. If you touch your screen right now, please wash your hands afterward. Lux also does a pretty good job with text, and here's an example of that. This is supposed to be sort of a vintage postcard from Atlantis and an underwater scene and have this architecture, and I even asked it to put Wish You Were Here down on the right corner, and it accommodated all of that. Looking again at Flux Dev's strength with photorealism, I think this image came out very well. The only issue I had is multiple attempts at trying to get one or both of these guys to have their hands down in the engine doing something. I just wasn't coming up with the right prompt word combination. Next, we've got another underwater scene. This one's not a postcard. This is, you know, a couple of fish in top hats having a tea with a mermaid and some glowing jellyfish things floating around. It looks great. My only concern is that their pastries are probably quite soggy at this point. A comic book cover. The prompt I gave it here was pretty short. Just the comic book style splash page of a superhero dramatically crash landing in a city. Like you've seen from the other examples where we gave more detail to the prompt, we could hone it in more to what we wanted. So I think I could expand on that prompt a little bit and get this to not be Superman, but instead be a superhero that is a unique creation. Here's another example of realism. What I was going for here is a multi-generational photo, sort of a casual taken in a backyard, the family's together, grandma wants a picture, that kind of thing. I went ahead and tried this prompt also in Flux Schnell just to see what the comparison would be. I kept it at the default four steps. The thing that stood out to me right away was this poor kid's white hair. That's a no-go. Pappy's hair is a little bit wild too. I think after Granny sees this picture, she's going to take him to the barbershop. I'm really happy to have the Flux Dev model as an option in open art. There's a lot of versatility from photorealism to being able to incorporate text in the image. Generations are pretty quick and you can vary the output by changing changing the length of the prompt or the formatting of the prompt, whether it's full sentence, natural language, or keywords, commas, and parentheses. And then you can adjust the steps that you want it to go through to help really just dial it in where you want the image to be. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped you in some way or at least provided some entertainment. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.